So today I want to take a look at Azure AD and how to authenticate web APIs. Here we have an Azure sample, which is an Angular SPA using .NET for a web API. We're going to go ahead and download the zip to get the uh, source code for that. And I have a working folder ready to go. We can extract everything. Okay, and when we look at the instructions, there's going to be step one through seven, which will be running the sample. And I wanted to walk through this because it took me a few passes and I thought it might be helpful to have a video for other people. Okay, so step two, we're going to go to the Azure Management Portal and we're going to add an application and enter a friendly name called Togo API. I've already logged in to Azure AD and this is the default directory. Uh, under the Applications tab, we can click Add for something our organization's developing. And we'll go ahead and double check here. Web application or web API, yep. And click Next. Here will be our URL for the first one. And that's going to be localhost. <clears throat> and then the app URI is going to be our tenant name. Now, in this case, the tenant name that I've got, I'll actually cancel out here and go to the domains tab. There it has the name of the domain. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and save that. And then when I come in to do the add dialog, we'll have the right address to copy paste. So we'll do localhost 27. That's where the website's going to run from. Over here we have the tenant name, but we need to format it a little differently. So let's get that part ready. Okay, great. So now we have our URI. Okay, those things look good. We'll hit create. All right, that takes care of step two, easy enough. Configure to go API to use your active vector your tenant. All right, so over here we're going to open the project and do some web config changes. All right, so now we have the project open, and we're looking for the Togo APIs web config, which will be down here at the bottom. It is going to want the tenant name, which we have in our notepad file. Paste that in. And it's going to want the app ID, which was this portion. Okay, looks good. Awesome. Mm -mm. Now for step five, I couldn't find the enable cores attributes. We're going to skip over that. It doesn't seem to be in the file anymore. In the SPA project for app.js, we're going to have to update the endpoints and give it the 27 URL here. So we'll go up to the SPA and we'll find app.js, endpoints, enter the root location here and then enter the API as its value. So take out those trailing spaces. Beautiful, now we've got that updated. Also in the to-do spa, we want to find the list service and give it the 27 address. And that is to-go list service over here. Enter the root location of your to-go API. All right, done. <clears throat> Deploy with your Azure Active Directory tenant. Okay, so here we need to go back to Azure AD and we need to add a second registration. So we're gonna do add. This'll be for the spa. The URL is 26. And the app ID, very similar to what we had earlier, 
but going to be a little bit different. Take out some of these uh, trailing spacings. Okay, to do spa. Very nice. Beautiful. Okay, so that added it. Now in the permissions to other, we're going to delegate the to-go API. Interesting. So let's go in to configure the spa down here at the bottom. Add permissions. Change this to all. See if we can filter things. There we go. And under the drop-down for delegated permissions, there's the to-go API. So we want to check all of that and hit save. And we'll want to write down the client ID before we leave. So let's scroll up. There it is. And we'll collect that in our notepad file. We're going to enable OAuth implicit grant. So this will be done via Notepad. So let's go ahead and manage manifest, download, all good. We will edit that file. And we have OAuth implicit flow. We'll change that to true, save, come over here and upload manifest giving it that same file we just had. Okay, that takes care of step five. Step six, configure the spa web config tenant and audience. So we come over here, we'll open this up. There's the client ID that we're gonna need. So we'll put that in the bottom. And we're gonna need the tenant name in the top. Go ahead and put that in and save. All right, back to our instructions. Also, locate the init in app.js, which is going to be over here. And we need our tenant name again. And we need our client ID again. Very nice. Back on the instructions, step seven, run the sample. Okay, let's go over to Visual Studio. We'll fold everything in and do a, a build. Okay, I'm getting a message on build that the path is too long. Interesting. What we'll do for that is move it to another folder. So here's our project. Let's bring those out them up a few levels, and let's try it again. Okay, so now we'll do a rebuild solution, and succeeded, wonderful. Okay, we'll look at the spas, index.html. Let's go ahead and uh, start the project and see what we have. Great, so here's our spa application, simple UI, top nav, and we are on the home route, which matches the nav bar. There's a login button in the corner. When we click login, it toggles to log out, and it provides us a new tab called user. Opening the user tab shows all of our logged in token about who we're authenticated as. Keeping in mind in the background, I was logged in for the Azure AD management, so it, it already knows who I am. We're just authenticating to the spa. Wonderful. And then let's go and check out the functionality. If we go to the to-do list route, and we add a new item, click add. It's added to the database. Here we can do more test. So we got three data items over here on to go list. And the same functionality where we can go ahead and add some items. And we navigate between routes. We can see the data is different. They all have edit functionality um, and delete. And we navigate back and forth. If we reload the entire page, the data is preserved. And all that information is getting held in a SQL local DB. 
the developer command prompt for Visual Studio to type SQL local DB. There's an option I for info, which will show you your instances. I happen to know it's that last one, and if we check the info on that, we get a connection string to the actively running instance, which we could come over and take a look at. So here we can connect to the instance, open databases, explore, look at tables. There's actually two different ones, a to-go and a to-do. If we script them out as select statements to a new tab, we can hit F5, query, and see the exact same data that was on our front end, uh, which is pretty cool. This kind of lets us see the, the back end and really you know, go look at that database that Entity Framework was provisioning for us. So some cool stuff there with SQL local DB. We've got the user token. We're doing CRUD operations and adding data. And all of this authentication is using Azure AD. But, you know, the interesting thing about that, and we can actually test it, is what happens if you tried to query the API without being authenticated. So if we open up Fiddler and then we navigate to the to-do list, go ahead and turn on traffic, navigate to the to-do list, we can come over here and inspect the traffic and look at the JSON return and see the three list items are here. And if we were to do that as a replay from Composer, execute, 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 each time we can see it's pulling back our data. Well, that's great, you know, that's what the API is supposed to do. What happens in the Composer if we were to take out our authentication token? So there is a header called Authorization Bearer that's listed here. And if we take that out and execute, we don't get data anymore. We actually get a 401 message, authorization has been denied. And, you know, we could also take the URL and come over to a browser, open a new tab, and just navigate to the URL. It says authorization denied. And the reason for that is that special header for authorization bearer is not being added by our application. That's something that the ADAL Angular library is doing for us as part of fetching the data. And so that's why you know, doing this in Angular is great. Having ADAL.js puts that header down for us. But just as a matter of being thorough, we can kind of test the API, run some requests manually, see that they're denied. And we know that's not an anonymous open API to the whole world, but it, it does in fact have security on it which matches with what we have in the code here when we go and we look at the controllers and we check out that authorize attribute. So you know the controllers are decorated with the authorize attribute that's going up to the uh, startup here where we told it we wanted the Owen library, we plan on using Azure Active Directory, here's our configuration settings. So that API is while freestanding, it is properly secured and we can test it with Fiddler. So that's the uh, full tour of the project. Thank you for watching.